So first of all, Happy New Year to everyone. I think Claudia was sharing a message. Happy New Year. And Happy New Year, now Monica can... and everyone. Yeah, Happy New Year, everyone. <laughs> Happy New Year to everyone. Hi, Monica, you're back. Yes, I'm back. Yeah. Physically back. Mentally, <laughs> maybe not. <laughs> Yeah, you know how it is, no? Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, we'll just pick up the thread uh, from where we left last time. So last time we had uh, started with this uh, disequilibrium of the being, uh, we started with psychological causes of illness and then with this uh, topic, disequilibrium of the being. And then we had taken up uh, a few lines from Veda of the body also, where Dr. Alok Pandey was sharing something on illness, the di dis inner disequilibrium and we are reading something from there. So now maybe we can go further. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, so page number 27. Uh, I think we can start with this. Each part of the body. So whoever wants to read it aloud is welcome. Yeah, Monica, I'll read. Yes, I know. Each spot of the body is symbolical of an inner movement. There is there a world of subtle correspondence. The particular place in the body affected by an illness is an index to the nature of the inner disharmony that has taken place. It points to the origin. It is a sign of the cause of the ailment. It reveals to the nature of the resistance that prevents the whole being from advancing at the same high speed. It indicates the treatment and the cure. If one could perfectly understand where the mistake is, find out what has been unreceptive, open that part and put the force and light there, it would be possible to re-establish in a moment the harmony that has been disturbed and the illness would immediately go. Yes. Thank you, Sadhguru. So we take this uh, for reflection. So uh, I think many of us may have read uh, books about, or uh, maybe now everything is on internet nowadays, thankfully. <clears throat> So we may have watched videos of many teachers about uh, this thing. Uh, it's not very uncommon to know that uh, each part of our being, each chakra, each body part is connected to a certain feeling and emotion. And uh, there is a connection. Not all the time, but most of the time there may be a connection. There is not a formula. Although people have given formulas in many, many books, but most of the times it would not also, uh, in many cases may not work according to that formula. But we know that in many cases, it's like each organ of our being is uh, connected to a certain emotion or a pattern that we have been trying to work with. So for example, Many a times, if one is not able to progress in life and feel the... I'm just muting everyone. Just 
so that there is no background echo and then whenever one wants to share you can unmute and share so uh, many a times it is like people who have maybe who feel like a responsibility you know too much responsibility and obligation like too much to do uh, their back and shoulders may be affected like you know you are feeling like this burden of uh, things to be done as you have, you have some responsibilities and feeling stuck at the these places other case may be uh, like people when we have problems in progressing in life one is having too much of resistance in progressing stagnancy is there then many a times a you know, problem with knees also come up because knees help us run right so they are a movement towards progress move, going forward so but it, again it is not very uh it is not that all the time whenever i will have a problem of knee then exactly this issue has to be there but there are correspondences uh, homeopathy also addresses that and uh, many people working with healing energies they also address that but it would not be like one can have a formula and this is how it has to be it's not very rigid but it is there there is a book called anatomy of the spirit Uh, by caroline miss and many years ago i uh, happened to have uh, get in touch with this book it's a very detailed description of each chakra each organ related with that chakra and how there are mood feelings and emotions associated uh, with that chakra like guilt or you know blame or all that but again you know this is like a very it's like a vast domain one can get lost so that's why masters have recommended not to try to connect the dot one by one okay let me pick one chakra then other chakra then other organ not like that because then there is no end to it so they suggest that making you know uh, making ourselves detached from the thoughts and feeling movement so that and the body so that we know that we are something more than that and a complete cleansing takes place rather than dot 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 cleaning but at every phase of our life we need something different so at times it may resonate with us that we are having a chronic problem with some area in my body and then we work upon that so we may begin with that but uh, we cannot just continue doing that because it's like endless so uh, the best or the highest possible suggested is to stabilize ourselves in the witnessing stance first you know to become take the stance of i am awareness and less everything is movement so not getting too much identified in the movements so that there is a clearing up of my field and something new can happen there but it can be a beginning point for for us to heal also in many many little little cases like one has a headache day to day things you know like uh, maybe some uh, air happened in the wind pipe happens when we don't eat at times you know it many of us are prone to that uh, blockage of air or uh, too much accumulation of air happens because of uh, not eating meals regularly or eating something which doesn't suit you so uh, headache happens because of that or maybe some throat may get irritated because of something so in those cases which are like day to day acute like they are not chronic that like you are living with them but they just happen and if one is becoming conscious and one realizes that oh some you know something that i feel in my being is uh, in disharmony then the best possible which mother and sri aurobindo have shared the bestest possible cure Uh, that can be tried and applied is to be absolutely still and immobile in that particular region of your being absolute stillness so no thought must move no feeling must move and even the inner uh, vibration of prana going up and down or feeling this restlessness or energy that also you completely still it or maybe remember uh, some instance in your mind which where you were absolutely still like no movement at all 
so that stillness and peace also if one can do it intensely at times we are not able to we are so disturbed that one is not able to but if that stillness and peace can be invoked in the body that act as acts as a cure for many many things and again we have we have to experiment with this only then we can know how much it works for us but it works so that is one possibility like mother is sharing here that if one could perfectly understand where the mistake is find out what has been unreceptive open that part and put the force and light there it would be possible to re establish in a moment you know in a moment the harmony that has been disturbed and the illness would immediately go so for acute cases i have seen that uh, this really works like you know many a times we say something which ought not to be said and when we are saying that heart or the throat may be affected you know we said some harsher words some crude word which we later on realize that no you know it was not proper to say that word so may we may feel some irritation in the heart in the wherever one is prone and then when one realizes that mistake and opens it up like to stillness peace immobility in that area and realizes the mistake then actually uh, it happens we can have experiments done for our own self which only we would realize that yes they work you know where it again harmonizes it happens yeah any any thoughts more reflections are welcome Uh, well, I have uh, observed few patterns. Uh, like when I am thinking something about past, whatever happened or whatever somebody has told, immediately I get a headache, and <laughs> it's there for the whole day. I mean, it takes almost a day to heal. Or when so that that sudden shift, I am not able to make. He may. let go wala so i get that headache frequently yeah beautiful so i think that's uh, beautiful because now as if something in the being is ready to make the shift right because most of the times we keep on thinking about the past and no headache happens <laughs> so that cannot be called a normal good healthy state because we are used to you know the body is adapted to stress or living in the past most of the time but now it means yeah. some part of your being is ready to move forward although some part is resisting but some part is also realizing that no this is not the right thing to be yeah. and that is why the headache is there so you can you know whenever you get it you can actually realize that oh i again slipped into the past and invoking stillness and peace in the body and you know realizing and then create recreating the harmony again so it's a good signal that the headache happens if you go into past because usually to most of us headache doesn't happen if we go into the past so that's really a good signal yeah. thank you it it means that something in the being is saying that wo nahi chahiye ab you don't want that anymore right so that's a beautiful thing it's a degree yeah. level kind of yeah. you know, moving ahead in purification yeah i mean as you said before also i used to think but never got an headache as such but ab wo lag raha hai it's too much now <laughs> yeah beautiful thank you for sharing yeah. i resonated with the what you said about the loss of voice so this thing i'm uh, from last two three days i was down with flu and uh, i tried to avoid medicines till the time i think it's really important so i was just drinking my tea and doing some meditation and all of that and i felt really good yesterday and i was feeling wow you know my body has this healing tendency i don't have to take paracetamol for it and i was so happy but yesterday i also had an argument <clears throat> and 
for a long time, I kept telling myself that I don't have to argue because I have a tendency of arguing. I kept saying, mother, I don't have to argue. I have to keep quiet. I have to keep quiet. But there came a time when I didn't argue, but I said something which I shouldn't. I, I felt I was right in the cause, but my sharpness of tongue took over. And I really said things that was really poignant for the other person, even though I still feel what I said was not bad, but how I said it, because it was said in a state consciousness of anger, you know, it, it's with my ego attached. And I was, I'm still okay. But today morning when I woke up, I had this hoarse voice, you know, I couldn't talk for some time, but it didn't register me. I was feeling I'm so all right. How come my flu is gone? Everything is gone. But this, you know, there's no pain as well. But the voice is hoarse, you know, I can't talk too much. And just when you said about that, that you shouldn't have said it. And then, and it, it's so true. And now I can actually make sense that it's because of that. So that's so true. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. So one can realize, you know, again, uh, one can correct the mistake, realize the mistake and invoke a lot of stillness and peace in that area, where, wherever one is affected and take it in the stride like, okay, I did it and let me go through the pain that comes along. Anything that we do, which is not in alignment with our true being, you know, so take it like a, what, what they say in Hindi, paschataap. <laughs> like you go with it, you know, like, okay, I did it. And yeah. But again, being kind to yourself also and invoking stillness and uh, immutability, like immobility in, in the body. Yeah. So see how, you know, like this, we understand that how it's like a self-correcting uh, mechanism that we can develop within. The more we become conscious of our movements, as mother says, you know, mother says that become conscious of your inner movement. So the more we become conscious of our in, inner movement, we slowly also develop a little bit of mastery. It, it's not a complete mastery suddenly, but a little bit of control, a little bit of mastery. Like, you know, you can steer it here or steer it there now because you are open and aware. So one becomes one's own healer. Because there is a healer in each one of us. So when we are talking of integral healing, we are talking of invoking that inner healer, which always is guiding. But we are so lost that we are not listening to signals. Now, most of us are becoming open to listening to those signals. So that we can self-correct. Yeah. Yes, Jashree. I don't know. Sorry. Okay. 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 Yeah, anyone if one wants to add anything, welcome. Yes. Uh, yes, Claudia, you go ahead, then Sadati can go after you. Thank you. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Uh, yes, uh, I was doing this uh, exercise of inquiries, and uh, I have a certain attitude since um, I was still a year of. Uh, uh, well, I am ashamed to tell it, but uh, I just going to say that I was doing the inquiry and I went back to my childhood, yes? And I was asking to this child, uh, what, why was keeping certain attitude, certain fear, you know, towards people or towards things? And I observe the event, I observe things, and then I ask, I ask the child, and I also ask myself, you can let go, you know, you can let go. I mean, it's not necessary to keep this fear, it's not necessary to keep even the shame or the guilt, everything. I was working with a with a teacher, and then and then something like like you say, in a second shift, you know, in my attitude. And me in my ideology and I was like oh my god I never was thinking in that way I never was approving that kind of thinking and that now comes to my mind because that inner child was hurt you know <laughs> or was I didn't want to let go of something you know and then was justifying when I was teenager like 
the N20 series. And I was like, wow, I can't believe it, you know. But it was just the right question in the right place, you know, and melt everything. I was like, what? So, thank yeah, you. Beautiful. Yes, thank you. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, Sardaji, you want to uh, share? Yeah, yeah. It happened to me two years back. See, uh, I was about to go to oh, you know somebody's house, but you know suddenly I was not feeling good about that lady. Though we know each other for so many years, you know something in me was you know telling that she is not all right. She is greedy. All these thoughts suddenly started coming, and I told her that I will be coming there around you know in the afternoon. So just before going there. I just fell down in my balcony very badly. Very, very badly. So I got very big hit in my hip. And as soon as I fell down, I immediately thought, you know, since you were not in a good, you know, alignment with that lady, that is why, you know, your body is getting hurt. See, I suffered with that for almost four or five months. But <laughs> uh, so it was paining so badly, and uh, I took it, you know, it's correct only because you were not in your right uh, alignment with your mind and soul. So it, 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 it was paining so badly, but you yeah. know, I, I told the mother that I made a mistake. So somewhere, yeah. you know, there was no chance of me falling down in my in that in that place. You know, there was no mm. water, nothing was there. But you know, why should I go and uh, you know do that? So it it was a great lesson. After that, I if I am not able to think good about you know, not that I'm a saint, but I'm at least trying. You know, if I'm not feeling good about anyone, so I'm not doing anything. I'll just sit sit back and you know step back. It's okay. Mm. If they are mm. like that, it is okay. So be it. Mm. You don't have to go and, you know, comment or you don't have to think about them. So mm. this is really helping me. Mm. See, when mm. even now that pain is there, whenever I feel mm. the pain, that mm. immediately my, you know, my memory goes there. Your attitude mm. was not right. That is why you got hurt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Even today and morning you know, it was pain. Uh, Yes. So I think first of all, what you just said, uh, so before the incident, I did not have the highest possible attitude, you know. So the incident told me that a signal, like knock, knock, you know, where are you lost, right? We were thought, lost, lost in our thoughts. And then since we have the possibility of taking the highest possible attitude at any moment, you know, no matter how many sins I may have done, it doesn't matter. At any new moment, I can take the highest possible attitude. So one realized the mistake and immediately one took the highest possible attitude in, in instead of blaming that, oh, why did it happen to me? Thanking that, thank you for showing that I was lost somewhere. You know, so yeah. like the universe gave us a signal and thanking grace for giving us a signal that we were lost where we should not have been lost. And secondly, I think... Uh, one thing with uh, you shared that that person may be like that and I don't have to worry. Now, the thing is that slowly we realize that our, like our lenses of looking mm -hmm. at the world, they are so distorted. They are so distorted that I now become more and more unsure of myself that whatever I'm thinking and feeling about the other person, mm -hmm. in that moment, it may appear that it is right. Mm -hmm. Right, most of us feel like that. That in that moment it appears, no, I am right, and you have to be better and you have to fix yourself, right? But the more we know ourselves more, we realize that we can't trust this curtain that is in front of us. There is a curtain that is in front of us, and this curtain distorts everything that we see. Everything we can be sure, and not only see but hear, listen, read. So, so there is a layer of interpretation that is 
there comes from the mind. So we have five senses plus the sense of mind, right? Whatever I see or listen or hear or touch or taste or smell, the mind is the sixth layer which distorts whatever I see, hear, taste, feel, touch, whatever, right? Mind and emotion together. Now, knowing that how distorted perceptions I have, how can I be sure that whatever storyline is going on in my head according for that person, that is right? How can yeah, I be sure? It might be wrong. It might be. I mean, <laughs> you can remove the might be. <laughs> it might be wrong. It might be right. But you know, you don't need to judge anyone. No? We also have the I, same defects no, that the other person is having. Yes. So it might be wrong. It might be right. Let us say that it is a curtain that is in front and I don't see clearly. Simple. Because as long as there is me and the other person in my consciousness, mm -hmm. I am in ignorance. Because okay. that's why so few of us are enlightened. Why? Because then their sense of separation finishes. They can't see that way. That there is me and my neighbor who is evil. Mm -hmm. Impossible that you live in that consciousness. So knowing yes. that I am not in that consciousness in which the duality has gone, we all know that we are not in that consciousness. That me and my neighbor are one. We, we, we know that that is not true for us right now. Right? It means that there is a veil of ignorance. Now when the veil of ignorance is there, what distortion it is bringing into my perception, I have no clue. No clue really. So the best that can be do that can be done is to keep working on ourselves and to keep purifying ourselves, knowing that whatever I see, listen, interpret here is always, always distorted. No matter how much of pinch of truth they may be there in that pinch of truth will always be there, but it will always be distorted. You know. Yes. Yes. And then it will not take much Beautiful. long to yes. uh, to let go of anger that I may be feeling at someone or hate I may be feeling at someone. Because the moment anger comes or hate comes, I immediately realize that how, how am I sure that what I am thinking is true? I immediately tell myself. So when what I am thinking is not true, I know that there is a distortion in my perception. Then what is the point of keeping anger and hate in my mind? Because anger and hate is only there as long as I believe that what I am thinking and feeling is right. Right. Yes. Yes. That's Very what true. Jitsunma Tenzing Palmo always shared. Mm -hmm. That we, th we are too sure of our thoughts and feelings. That yes, what I am thinking and feeling is right. Yeah. That surety has to go down and down and down. And then we can't take our anger that seriously. We can't. It will come and go. It, it, it can't stay. It, it, it's yeah. not that it will just stop coming. Because these are, you know, old histories <laughs> and patterns. It will come. But I will not be able to fuel it. Because it will tell me something. That look, this happened, that happened. It will tell me something. But I will say, how can I believe you? I can't believe you. Beautiful, not, Monica. Thank you. Know, you. Yeah. You know, <laughs> if we put this question, then everything yes. will take back seat. You know, we'll also just step back. Yes. 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 It takes a back. Yeah. Yes. Very true. Just like we so have, it you looks know, like. Yes. Yeah. 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 Please go ahead. Yeah. Please go ahead. Please. Go ahead. No, when we were, you know, children, my father used to, yeah. Yeah, my father used to tell us, you know, if we are, if we get angry, he will say, no, no, you drink water, then you get angry. <laughs> the dagger will be there. First you drink water, then you come back to the same uh, question or answer. Mm -hmm. So that is, initially we didn't know, we'll drink water, then, ah, appa, ah, okay, appa, we'll just say and we'll, you know, me and my sister used to fight a lot <laughs> <laughs> young. And he always insists, drink water, then you both fight, you will have a lot of energy, he will say. But we will not fight. Beautiful. So <laughs> beautiful. Yes. 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 See, so immediately so you this get is distracted like that. from yes. Immediately you get distracted from 
uh, what you were trying to make so concrete and real. You know, so that's a <laughs> wise person's way of interfering and you know saying that no, it's not that important. What you are thinking is that important. beautiful. <laughs> Yeah, so it was, you know, uh, uh, I felt the same feeling here, you know, just put yeah. the question in between, yeah. how much you know that you are right. Yes, yes, yes. yeah, beautiful. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, anyone else wants to add on? One question, Monica. Like you just said that whenever there is some disequilibrium, call for peace, so and stillness. So this peace and stillness is just on a mental level, or we should actually like let's say the knees hurt, so we should actually sit still and let it be still. I mean, not move. So it's physical also and mental also, or it's only mental. Yeah. So, as you would already, you know, feel that it is, it has to be at all the levels. And we all have felt that stillness at some point of our life. You know, some glimpses have been given to us when we were absolutely frozen. You know, if we recollect, if we look back at our life, we will have some moments in our life where we were just absolutely nothing like like a piece of rock you can say just frozen so at that time there is no movement in thought there is no movement in feeling and there is also no movement physically because see if i want to carry it like i'm physically moving and i want to carry that stillness even when i'm physically moving it takes time so in the beginning, when I'm trying to cultivate stillness and immobility in my being, I will have to have moments of absolute physical stillness also. Then slowly what will happen after some practice is there, then even when I am moving, that stillness is something that I carry in myself. But that can't come with like the first thing. Like when we are meditating, you know, we can't start by meditating throughout the day. That cannot happen. What, what do we try to do? We try to sit for five minutes in the morning, five minutes at night, you know, like that. We try to sit. Now, slowly, slowly, as we continue with a little discipline, then throughout the day, it kind of stretches itself. So now, throughout the day, we can be a little meditative, reflective, conscious. But that cannot happen just like that. The first day we can't be totally meditative 24 hours a day. So in this exercise also, cultivating stillness in the being, there also I need to have some pocket where I'm absolutely still you know, in my day. And, and for yourself, see the effect of it. No, the phone, don't believe me. Mother also said, and this is, I'm just sharing what mother says. I'm not adding something new, right? So mother says that test out for yourself. And when, for example, a little headache happens, a little throat irritation happens, and you say, and suddenly get reminded of, oh, I remember I can invoke stillness. So you become absolutely still, no movement of thought, no movement of feeling, and physically also still. And you retain it for some time, you know? Then you see for yourself whether it affects your harmony, brings some relief or not then you would know that would be the proof you know? and for this we can actually invite those images or moments in our life where we have felt that absolute stillness and peace you know for for example for me it could be say Samadhi in Pondicherry, where I feel absolute stillness, like a concrete, powerful stillness is there, right? So whenever I want to invoke stillness in any part of my body, I can just remember how am I at the Samadhi. 
you know, and then that stillness comes back to you. For anyone, it could be anything, any moment of life which you can recall where you were absolutely silent and still. Or you can invite, recreate it, right? You can create something new. Anything is possible. So there is no like one formula. But it is a very, very effective power. Absolute immobility is a very, very effective power to heal. So if not anything, we can move forward. So I am not uh, again touching upon what organs or what chakras are referring to each emotion, feeling, you know, I'm not going there because Shurabindo and mother also have not like given it a formula, like this is how it works and it has to be like that every time. They have not given it like that. Although if we want to read and understand, there are many, many teachers who have given us that, like a tab tabular form, you know, this organ belongs to this emotion, guilt, shame, like that. So we can go through the next last paragraph of this topic, this particular one, starting from the origin of an illness. So anyone who would like to read is welcome. I read it. Yes, Claudia, you want to read? Shweta, I don't yeah, know. Yes. Okay. Who was the first? <laughs> let let Cla Claudia read. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. The origin of all illness may be in the mind. It may be in the bit vital. It may be in any of the parts of the being one and the same illness may be due to a variety of causes it may be a spring in different cases from different sources of disharmony and there may be to an appearance of illness where there is no real illness at all in that case if you are sufficiently conscious, you will see that there is just a friction somewhere, some halting in the movement. And by setting it right, you will be cured at once. This kind of malady has no truth in it, even when it seems to, to have physical effects it is half made up of imagination and has not the same grip on matter as a true illness. In short, the sources of an illness are my manifold and intricate. Each can have a multitude of causes, but always it indicates where is the weak part in the being. Yeah, thank you. I remember uh, Pema Chodron talks about this that many a time it is uh, first thought and then because we are thinking a feeling is created, emotion is created or at times it also happens that first your feeling is triggered. Like you didn't think anything but you felt hurt or you know like at the emotional level we are triggered. But it's not that we were thinking about anything. 
Now, I, I have a feeling that in most of the cases where we are hurt first at the emotional level, although we were not having a storyline in the head, these are very deep-rooted patterns that come to us for transformation, deep-rooted ones, because I have no active storyline about that, but still I'm in the emotion I feel hurt. So here, yes, the origin can either be in the mind at the thought level that, oh, I was thinking like this, 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 and that like translates into the feeling and then into the body and then I create something for me. You know, the body manifests an illness. Or it could be in the vital, which is emotional, our feeling part, you know, that Something is going on there which I have no clue how to sort or deal with. There is disharmony. Or it may be anywhere. Like, again, the thing is so complex that we can't really all the time connect all the dots. You know, that is uh, at times not possible. Because many a times most of us, um, not most of us, but many of us also, you know, try to connect dots too detailed. And that cannot happen cannot happen because there's so many forces, so many intricate things which we are not aware of. So half of the picture I'm not aware of. And whatever limited I see, I'm trying to connect the dots in that. So that's never going to work for me. And that is why the first and the highest possible attitude is take a step back and expand in your consciousness. You know, so that we begin to see at least that, oh, I, I really can't see the larger picture. So not waste much, much energy in trying to connect the little, 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 you know, things that we all the time are busy with. So then we, we can really save a lot of drainage of energy and heal ourselves at a deeper level rather than connecting dots in little, little places. So one and the same illness may be two, two causes of variety of causes. Now, again, many a times we talk about, oh, Ramana Maharishi was an enlightened person. Then why did he have skin cancer? <laughs> You know, so this is where we realize that we, our limited mind cannot understand. To me, skin cancer may be because I have to heal something. You know, to some other person, skin cancer may happen because just like Prarab karma or Sanchit karma, and he has to just go through it. Who knows why is it happening? But the only thing that is in my hand is, can I right now take the highest possible attitude? You know, we don't know how it is happening, from where it is happening but now that it is happening can I heal myself as, at an integral level can I shift the consciousness from which I operate from ego consciousness I you know go to my inner being and operate from there is that a possibility rather than you know trying to connect with little dots and this thing is very popular nowadays like not like popular in a good sense but very common there may be to an appearance of illness where there is no real illness. In case, and in that case, if you are sufficiently conscious, you will see that there is a friction somewhere, some halting in the movement, like one has stopped to progress in life. And by setting it right, you will be cured at once. So most of the times we say that uh, many illnesses, in fact, most of the illnesses virtually are psychosomatic illnesses. You know, so some psychology is associated with whatever the body is trying to tell me. But in many cases it happens, it is not very uncommon to find that people, uh, that there are diagnostic tests done of many, many sorts, but actually no doctor can really identify anything wrong anywhere. But still the patient is not feeling well. You know, he's saying that no, something is wrong. I don't know where it is wrong, but something is wrong. And we are doing all kinds of tests that are possible. So many variety of tests are there. You know, all kinds of packages are there. Uh, but you can't really locate that, oh, this is where the problem is. And that is where we can see that it is just mostly psychological. And if I become conscious of it, if I correct that in my attitude, in my being, then it can be dissolved. Many a times we become stagnated in our life that, oh, this is who I am and I can't just progress further. This is what I am. You know, people can fix themselves, but now I am fixed. So then also things begin to happen in a way that some or the other knock on the door is given. That please, you know, don't settle down wherever you are. 
as mother says life is a continuous progress until one is alive one has to progress so even when i am 90 80 70 doesn't matter what age we can't say that mera to ho gaya you know now i am done so some halting in the movement you know, that we have stopped to progress we have stuck got stuck in our personality and then by setting it right you will be cured at once at times we may be really troubled with many many desires and expect expectations you know and i remember that once uh, i was going through this phase intensely desirous phase like too much expectations too much demand and my tummy really got so upset there was no other reason for the upset of tummy and the moment that phase was over you know that uh, it got settled and the tummy also really got settled now there may be of course other factors operating but one thing which i got conscious of was that as soon as just restlessness settled in my being the tummy automatically realized like relaxed and uh, came back to a normal health and i lost a lot of weight because uh, nothing was settling in my body whatever i would eat it will just not assimilate properly and now if i go to a doctor he won't say that oh are you too desirous <laughs> Uh, only a very holistic doctor may point at that but and then later on i read in sri aurobindo's uh, letters on yoga that the seat of desires the lower vital is in the lower abdomen where uh, my thing was happening it was later that i connected so again uh, mother is not over simplifying the matter <laughs> thankfully so she is saying that in short the sources of an illness are many fold and intricate so there is no one formula even for like for example say i have uh, diabetes now 10000 people with diabetes again 10000 different possibility we can't use one formula on everyone hmm? for some it may be just cured by addressing some emotional mental issues for some it may be something different who knows so that really humbles us that makes us grounded as practitioners as doctors as either we are working as therapists that no one case is uh, no two cases are same so in short the sources of an illness are many fold and intricate each can have a multitude of causes but always it indicates where is the weak part in the being and then one can address that yeah anything anyone wants to add on i think this also uh, humbles us and makes us unsure because many a times as doctors or if we have seen many cases we may become too sure of ourselves <laughs> that oh i know why this is happening i know you know i have seen so many cases but then if we realize this that no you know not any two cases are same and then we can be unsure of ourselves what we were talking with charda ji earlier that to be unsure of our ideas and thoughts because when we are unsure of our ideas and thoughts then we give something higher uh, the opportunity to unfold you know something more expansive and wide an opportunity to unfold than the same repetition of one formula okay so then if not anything we can go forward and maybe take this one up also today yeah anyone who would like to read yeah shweta shweta you wanted to read now you can yeah I, yeah yeah i'll read here yeah. in reality illness is only a disequilibrium if then you are able to establish another equilibrium this disequilibrium disappears an illness is simply 
always in every case even when the doctors say that there are microbes in every case a disequilibrium in the being a disharmony among the various functions a disharmony among the forces this is not to say that there are no microbes there are there are many more microbes than are now known but that is not why you are ill for they are always there it happens that they are always there and for days they do nothing to you and then all of a sudden one day one of them gets hold of you and makes you ill why simply because the resistance was not as it usually is because there was some disequilibrium in some part the functioning was not normal but if by an inner power you can re establish the equilibrium then that is the end of it there is no more difficulty the disequilibrium disappears there is no other way to cure people it is simply when you see the disequilibrium and are capable of re establishing equilibrium then one is cured yeah thank you so no uh, this equilibrium can be established and that's why we say many a times you know we say that oh for me this works the other person may say oh for me this works for me doing a fast for one day works so every person would say this works this works this works now we cannot make it a formula because for me fasting helps to make the equilibrium possible right and it worked for me but for another person maybe a nature walk may help fasting may not help so that is why we every case is so different every individual is so unique you know that the same thing which and again we have all seen that the same thing which may have helped me uh, 10 years ago now 10 years later if i try the same thing it may not work because i have changed as a person so to recreate that equilibrium the same thing may not work something else may work now you know now maybe music may work for me 10 years later uh, earlier music did not work for me 10 years earlier fasting worked for me but now to recreate that equilibrium music may work for me now we cannot say that now music works all the time we cannot make it a formula because to many people music may be totally ineffective something else may help so mother is pointing at the root of it that whatever music is doing fasting is doing later walk is doing going to samadhi whatever you know like to each his own the thing that it is doing is that it is recreating the equilibrium which we lost for some this time so now one of the things that came to me when shweta was reading is that uh, you know that mother is sharing here that if there is a disequilibrium like a disharmony like a pulsating something which is there in the being then you are able to establish another equilibrium so that vibration which is of this equilibrium that is taken care of by the new greater equilibrium signa khan shares he talks about mindfulness of breathing and he says that i have seen that it is not that suffering has to be completely removed so that joy can be there he says in in presence of suffering you can establish joy how and then he talks about when there is pain emotional pain or really like an intense vibration restlessness in the being which we don't know how to deal with so he says that just hold just mindful be mindful of your breathing and he says that with mindfulness of breathing you are actually creating like a big sister he uses many other words as in different talks in one he is saying that you create a big sister and the little sister was the disequilibrium now the big sister is taking care of the little sister so the lower vibration is being taken care or embraced by the big sister in another he says that uh 
it like it's it's like an embrace that happens that when you are you're not doing anything to the emotional pain or the physical pain as such you are not touching it but you are just mindful of it mindful of it so you are breathing mindfully you are with it you are with it so by by being with it and being with your breath you are creating like an embrace like an envelope and again like an equilibrium you are creating which takes care of that lower vibration of pain that was there and slowly one is able to create a greater harmony you know and as such you did not deal with the pain as such you did not poke the emotional or physical pain but you created a greater harmony hmm so this also can be uh, again connected with what sharda ji was sharing in the beginning that if i am angry you know anger is a lower vibration is a disequilibrium now suddenly your attention is on water okay let us drink water now drinking water or the process of moving to the water and you know getting a glass and sipping it creates a vibration and that vibration is a bigger and stronger vibration than the lower vibration and the lower one is taken care of hmm so in reality illness is only a disequilibrium and if then you are able to establish another equilibrium which can come through any means for some it could be art music walk you know just being with the breath you know so a bigger equilibrium comes which takes care of the lower vibration and with this mother also talks about when she shares that uh, say two people are fighting with each other and i want to uh, kind of create a harmony i want to say that please don't fight or whatever mother says that a lower way is that you interfere and you say oh don't fight or oh, don't do this or oh, don't do that or oh, you are right or oh, you are wrong this is a lower way and then she says the best possible the highest possible way is that just because of your presence and vibration the harmony is created you didn't say anything you didn't try to correct this person or that person just because you had such a stronger vibration of immobility or peace or you know whatever light that you were carrying it took care of that lower vibration that also is our possibility and when this crack happens in our being like here mother is sharing that it's not that microbes are not there microbes are there but by this this equilibrium you create a crack like a crack happens in your envelope nervous envelope a crack happens and when that crack happens you are prone to the illness you are prone to that microbe which so far was not doing anything to you and we all have such i'm sure we all have such experiences where because of our pulling down in due to the thought story lines that we were carrying or we became moody and came down immediately we became susceptible to what so far we were okay with you know we had a resistance to but now immediately i'm taken in because maybe i felt that uh, oh i am feeling so weak today but some kind of you know lower pull comes and immediately you open yourself like a crack happens in that envelope and you open yourself to the illness to which you were so far resistant and by japa you know we have been talking like taking mother's name and establishing our consciousness with mother's name any divine name that resonates with us you know if that creates a protective envelope around us which uh, stabilizes which solidifies us that we become more resistant we, that's the greatest immunity that we can have if we stabilize ourselves in the divine panacea yeah so any um, comments any last comments or reflections anyone
so i think we can just take it as a tool that whenever we are lost in our story lines and believing them to be true we are actually creating cracks in our consciousness in that envelope hmm? in uh, immersing ourselves in our judgments immersing ourselves in all kinds of you know negative thoughts and feelings we create cracks here and there and how to heal those cracks stabilizing ourselves uh, with any divine name form chant anything that resonates or for those of us who may just use breath as a stable stabilizer that gives us immunity if if we want that immunity you know if we want that no i want to have good work good spirit i want to have good health because i want to you know offer myself in this world so i don't want to keep on falling ill again and again then we can actually create this immunity for ourselves so instead of resting our mind in thoughts feeling story line we rest ourselves in mother's name or any divine name that resonates with us we rest ourselves with the breath we keep the mind home in the body that is how we can create a robust immunity and then of course not to say that things may not happen things may still happen but then uh, we will have a different attitude towards it so, alok da was sharing once in a talk that somebody yeah i think it was some senior uh, sadhak i can't just remember recollect the name he was ill and then somebody came to him and i said that oh what happened to you and he said no just my sweet heart is giving me some trouble like you know so really taking it in a very beautiful manner yes nandini yeah. you wanted to add on sorry monica it was amrita da yeah yeah yes amrita da yeah, so, yeah. thank, thank you. you sorry yes sir. i just wanted yes, to nandini. say that i was watching this documentary on the on the powers of a body on netflix a very good one and there was one episode on the immune system and you know i was so amazed because i'm not from science background so i didn't know too much of the complexity and this thing and i was so amazed at this wonderful divine protection i immediately thought that my god i don't even know that they're inside me i mean how the t cells are formulated even when i'm sleeping it's protecting me you know it doesn't give up on me even if the virus is attacked even then it is continuously protecting us even knowing that you know virus is multiplying it give it best towards the very end it doesn't give up on us and i just feel my god this is the divine protection and how much i take for granted i don't even think once you know before you know not washing my hands and eating something knowing it has to work double because you know i'm not being conscious or not eating properly or not sleeping properly and i just feel so much gratitude you know that my, this is the divine protection and so amazing i don't have to do you know other things i just try to protect this and preserve this so what you said about the immunity it's so true about that just realizing it that we have it within ourselves this divine protection called immune system beautiful yes beautiful and you know whenever we are troubled with uh, something that is not happening in our life many a times it happens that that becomes the biggest thing in my life that oh this is not happening this is not happening and then we can actually become conscious that so much i have what you were sharing that wow you know the body is still functional my mind and intellect are still functional by grace so then we can actually shift our focus from what is missing what is missing to what so much that i have been given gifted with i like really like these things become conscious from last four especially four months since because i've seen illness from a close heart with my mom being terminally ill and my grandmother she is still also on bed now and you know being here in ireland some you have to do everything on your own there is no domestic help sometimes you do get overwhelmed with studies work and then you have to do things you know and 
but now it has really changed my perspective every time i feel i have to do something extra i have to get up and you know uh, make myself a tea or you know help somebody do something i just think my god what a gift i have that my body is still functional it's a gift i mean if if i can get up and get that glass of water it's a gift because i've seen people lying on bed not able to do anything and craving that i wish i can go to the bathroom i wish i can make myself a cup of tea so i'm so blessed and it just immediately changes my perspective and rather than grumbling i do it with um, with happiness the sense of gratitude so i mean yeah so that's really true as well beautiful thank you for bringing it up so any last comments before we end or shall we end it here okay so maybe uh, just taking a last moment before we leave uh, to just uh, share our happiness health joy delight may all beings be healthy happy joyful and may we all connect with our inner healer which always is here and we may we become uh, conscious of what all gifts we have been gifted with and make the best use of this precious human life so thank you everyone thank you for joining listening patiently and reflecting together happy practice and we we'll see you guys later thank you bye bye thank you mom you thank you bye thanks everyone thank you bye bye thank you, thank thanks you. everyone we'll see you